Hey guys, this is Mario from shockingfit.com and I have another treat for you guys and this is my full lower body day that I just did today. It's full of PRs, full of good stuff and here I'm gonna start off with the warm-up routine that a lot of guys requested for me and just asking, hey man, how do you warm up for your lower body? How do you warm up for your squats? Well, the first thing I do are these uh, glute activation um, movements and one specifically that I like is this one on the bench with just my resistance loop band. I'm gonna leave this uh, band a link in the description below for you guys. Uh, I know a lot of you have been messaging me privately asking where do I get one of these bands. So I'm gonna leave an Amazon link in the description so you guys can find one for yourself. I actually got that uh, tip from a guy called Silent Mike. Check out his YouTube as well. I'm gonna leave that in the description below. Super cool guy. He posts a lot of videos. So I got a um, kind of glute activation tip for him and you'll see me doing one of uh, his recommended movements in the warm-up routine as well. So here I'm just doing some general hip flexor kind of stuff because my hips are very tight. I mean, I sit a lot and I notice a big difference if I do these or I don't do these. I mean, it makes a massive impact on my squat. I also actually had I think a small strain last week when I was doing uh, squats, I kind of felt it in my hip flexor, so I was really careful to warm up today. So I did my uh, standard routine, which uh, you guys are seeing here. So these are some uh, good mornings with a little bit of a twist, just to make sure that I get the body moving. And uh, yeah, I mean, the warm up is uh, pretty kind of general, you know, for the whole body because you can't really just warm up one part of the body if you're doing squats or uh, I'm doing remaining in deadlifts today. And all these movements are compound movements and you can't just warm up one part of your body and expect uh, to be uh, ready, right? You need to add a lot of more stuff to it just to make sure that you're, that you're good to go. I mean, the extra five minutes that you spend warming up goes a long way versus like potential months and months of uh, being injured and things like that. I'm very preventive focused when it comes to exercising because I was injured in the past when it comes to squats. And this is a very interesting one. So once you get one of these bands, you actually tie up your uh, legs together and just move around. And what this does act actually it activates my glutes because it forces those uh, muscles to work and uh, this is just a generic warm-up I mean I didn't exactly make it up but it, it is a modification of some of the stuff I seen on the internet and this is just what works for me and I feel like it's very simple and I just repeat this every single time and I feel really good after and I, my hips just open up uh, amazingly well and I can hit depth I go pretty deep on my squats I do high bar deep squats I like ass to grass for all my sets, for all my days of training, whether it's a strength day or hypertrophy day, I still go very deep. So it's necessary for me to really uh, warm up and make sure that I hit, to hit that depth, uh, make sure that I really uh, loosen up and get those uh, quads ready uh, to explode out of the hole. So yeah, these are quite interesting to do. If you've never done them before, you're gonna feel um, amazing. Uh, you're gonna feel that level of glute activation that most people really never experience, which is uh, very, very important for lower body movements. And here I'm just doing some uh, kind of paleo chair style, uh, sit down in a deep squat position just to see uh, how I feel and how the knees feel as well. That's a big thing. And here's some um, hip flexor again stuff, some uh, lunges. And it's pretty generic stuff as you see, I mean, I've kind of distilled my warm up over the years and I mean a lot of you guys asking me how long you've been training, well it's been almost 5 years so it's going to be a 5th uh, year anniversary this summer 2016, super happy about that, uh, going to celebrate with a, with a massive meal regardless of my shape at that point, it's going to be a huge feast to celebrate my 5th year, 5th uh, anniversary in the gym and uh, here you see me doing some um, uh, flexion work to, to make sure that I get my depth, get my dorsiflexion going. Uh, this is uh, good stuff if you have the mobility for it. If you, even if you don't have the mobility to do these things, I would still suggest slowly start incorporating this kind of work in your training because it is going to go a long way and it's going to help you keep your knees healthy. It's going to help you um, overall keep those, uh, keep those ankles and everything working properly. In, in a sense, like for the lower body, they, the worst kind of injuries that 
people usually experience like either hamstrings or knees, right? And the upper body is usually the shoulders. So really keeping these things in mind uh, it makes a big difference in the long run. I mean, as a natural, it's gonna take you years and years of actual training to make that physique that you want and the physique that you see on instagram the one you see on facebook if you i don't know if you see a picture from someone who you really admire i mean it probably took years and years to make thousands of thousands of repetitions and here's some uh overhead squatting uh this is actually pretty good because you do want to have a, a band like this to spread out on top this kind of trains my rear delts because rear delts are gonna hold the bar and the upper body, uh, upper, body uh, upper back tightness plays a big role in uh, the squat. So that's one thing you want to work on. Also those external rotation muscles. Again, you know, it doesn't make that much of a difference in terms of strength, but it does make a difference when you have that upper body tightness and that's going to make a difference uh, when you're squatting, when you're just trying to get tight in your core as well. So here I decided to warm up. Uh, with just my regular uh, ramping up from starting from the bar. These are a little bit uh, speed up because I didn't want to waste your time uh, watching the warm-ups. I mean, it's it's the same every fucking time. If I post a squat video, it's gonna start from an empty bar and I'm just gonna incrementally add a couple of uh, pounds, a couple of plates for each set. And I'm gonna test my depth, I'm gonna test how I feel. And I'm gonna kind of eyeball the warm-up uh, in a sense that I might not do uh, like 10 reps on, on the first empty bar run, sometimes I'm going to do 8, sometimes I'm going to do 12, sometimes I'm going to do 15, it's really how I feel and if I feel I'm ready, if I feel I'm warm, especially if I'm doing a lot of uh, squatting that week, I feel like I'm kind of going in there already warmed up, so I might do a little bit less, right, so that doesn't mean that there's kind of a magical number of how many warm up sets or reps you need to do. But I would suggest really uh, listen to your body and uh, make sure that you uh, go for uh, what your body's telling you to do. So this is the first set of the day and I'm already going for a PR. So 120 kg for six reps is a PR for me. So uh, it felt quite freaking heavy in the warm up. I didn't feel I could do it, but I did surprise myself today. So it was a very pleasant surprise. I actually broke my PR twice. And I think one of the fact is that I filmed it because this really keeps me accountable and I make sure that I really uh, put in a lot of effort. So this felt easier than I expected. At the warm up, I felt like this weight is going to fucking crush me. But as I started doing the sets, you know, it just uh, kind of worked, you know, like sometimes you just have to trust it, trust that it's going to work. And here I'm like, okay, six rep, PR, you know, let's go for it. And yeah, nailed it. You know, I probably had two more in me, right? Two more reps in me, but I don't want to like push myself too hard. And here, see, happy face, broke the PR. I don't want to push myself too hard. I don't want to jump ahead too much. So I'm going to just try to repeat the PR on the second set rather than go in the first set and kind of reap that muscle failure point because I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to be able to sustain that volume for the rest of the training. So I want to make sure that I solidify kind of the PR. This is what I'm doing in the set two. So yeah, getting tight, hitting that depth, uh, really good um, here. I'm happy with the depth, uh, what I'm doing here. And uh, I would definitely even go a little bit deeper once I kind of get used to this weight and that's gonna be my goal. And for this day, actually, I mean, this is my last time I'm doing uh, reps of six with 120. This is uh, gonna go up and I'm gonna intensify my workout. So again, pulled the six. So what I mean by intensify means I'm gonna aim for a little bit lower repetitions on this day. Next time I train, so it's gonna be 125 for uh, three to five reps. So however many reps I get to pull with that, hopefully five, you know, I'm aiming for five and we'll see. So here I went for the seventh rep. So I felt like I had it. And th that's just, again, it's just me listening to my body and seeing, hey, can I, can I pull this shit off? And it just works. And sometimes you do need to trust your body and just say, okay, if you can pull it off, I can pull it off, right? There's no way, if someone told me, hey, you're gonna be doing seven reps, 120 kilos just before I went to the gym today, I would be like, fuck off, dude, there's no way in hell. Because I was doing sets of five, just 
three weeks ago and was feeling super heavy, right? And that's just, it just works. Sometimes you have to like, just accept the fact that, that just, uh, you, you're strong, right? Sometimes you're strong, do it. And here I'm happy again. Here's my Fit Notes app that I use to track my uh, weight in the gym. I'm gonna leave that description in the link uh, in the description below for you Android users. For iPhone, I prefer to use the app called Strong. And here I'm doing RDLs, Romanian deadlifts. Um, and one thing with Romanian deadlifts, when guys see me do these, if you don't have the mobility to really go deep like this with keeping your legs fairly straight don't do that like go as deep as you can comfortably whatever your comfort level is whatever your mobility allows you so you don't need to go as deep as i go and that's something that is completely individual same for the squat some people just can't squat that deep and it's okay it's fine you just do the best you can and improve it over time and um, with the rdls i decided to actually go for a weight increase to 125 and this is not a PR actually, and I'm not sure why this wasn't a PR because it felt quite heavy, but I think I was uh, uh, adding some extra range of motion today because uh, I probably hit a 130 kg for eight, but I didn't go as deep. So today I was like, okay, let's uh, really push the range of motion to the max. And uh, this would be kind of the range of motion PR if you would want to call it like that. They felt really good. With the RDL, it's very important to keep the bar as close to your body as possible, as much as you can, and uh, really work on that tightness in your core. So here I actually did seven reps because I felt like I lost the tightness for the eighth rep, and I didn't, I didn't want to risk it. Like that one rep, I didn't want to risk it. So with this exercise, you'll see that it's all about the tightness. If you're not tight, and if your back is not neutral, it's very, very risky. So I would say that uh, it is one of those movements that you really need to be careful, but it's an amazing movement to stimulate your hamstrings. This works wonders. This is my favorite movement for hamstrings. If someone asked me, okay, what are your three favorite movements for a leg? You're gonna see all three of them in this video. So the first one is the squat, the second one is the RDL, the third one is actually hip thrust. So I love this movement and uh, it's the best movement to build your glutes by far. And I'm doing it on a Smith machine because I don't have a hip thruster in this gym. Uh, if you have a hip thruster, I envy you massively. I had one in, if you check my last uh, lower body day, I had a hip thruster and it does fucking wonders. If you don't have a hip thruster, I mean, you can just use the regular bench. The problem with the regular bench in this kind of gym is that the side of it, it's not straight. It's not a straight line. So it is kind of like, I kind of adjust it to make it as straight as possible, but it's also moving on the floor. But I pull it out and you know, do what you can, do the best you can, uh, get in those reps. And here again, I'm doing 130 kg. The camera is a little bit shaking as the weight is uh, moving around. So I uh, hope you guys don't mind. So I'm doing uh, sets of high repetitions on this day, simply because I, in this particular movement, if I go too heavy, I don't feel like my glutes are working. I'm kind of, uh, I guess, cheating the motion. I don't, I don't, don't really uh, want to cheat. I would rather do a little bit lower weight, higher reps. Just really feel that uh, stimulation in my glutes. Because the third exercise of the day, I mean, I already done my squats, which was the main aim to break the PR, break the PR today. So on as far as the hip thrust, I mean, just do the best you can and get in that volume here 140 kg for 10 this felt really good actually that uh, like that small pause at the end and here's some accessory work and i always throw in some unilateral movements uh, as you see in my video the exercise i hate the most is the dumbbell uh, reverse dumbbell lunge this is kind of the second exercise uh, like the second most hated exercise in my library this these are uh, dumbbell uh, split squats quite an interesting movement it's um I'm one of those women that works really well to train those hip flexors and I always feel it uh, and it always generates a massive amount of uh, delayed onset muscle soreness for me. So I do throw this in just to make sure that I work my balance so I don't neglect my balance and um, I think this movement is kind of variation that 
I combine with the walking lunge, reverse dumbbell lunge and this one and they work wonders. So I'll definitely recommend if you don't do any unilateral work to include some in your training and you pick whichever exercise you want to do. And for the end, obviously doing some calves, you know, you don't want to go to team no calves. And uh, this is uh, basic seat, uh, seated calf raises, you know, I'm making sure to get that squeeze, making sure to connect with the calves. You know, it's, it's all about the mind-muscle connection at this point. I'm doing high repetitions. I'm doing some uh, bro leg raises to get some uh, core, some ab work, also to kind of uh, decompress the spine because uh, spine has done a lot of work. And I'm also adding one of these. I saw this in uh, Greg Plitt's video and I think this one is pretty cool. Uh, and also works pretty well on the, just on the obliques. And it gets, again, some of that uh, decompression is fine. Just uh, quite interesting after the um, heavy work, I guess, after the squats. So again, uh, second set of calf raises. I went a little bit higher in the reps. This the machine started actually to fall apart because there's these uh, black things uh, covering the bolts on, on, on the top, so it started falling off. And uh, adding some extra leg raises here, the second set. Uh, working on really feeling those abs and it is quite painful I mean at the end of the workout he's just like come on let's get this shit over with and uh, yeah that's uh, kind of adding again some of those uh, kind of work split uh, running the air you know you can call them air runs or something like that so here I just decided also to film a little bit how, how the legs work and some of the pump I got from the leg day pretty happy with the development hope you guys enjoyed this video Hope you um, enjoyed the lower body days. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.